make very brief remarks about this news. June 12 Democracy Day and it's on this commemorative lecture. This year's anniversary coincides with the build up of activities towards the 2023 general elections. In the last few months, political parties have been engaged in party primaries to produce candidates for the next elections. I wish to congratulate our Green Party, the All Progressive Congress, for the successful conduct of the presidential primaries, which was the most transparent and competitive of all political parties. Despite the tension, speculations, and uncertainty in the weeks and days before the primaries, the party has shown that it is capable of rising above sentiments. It lived up to the highest ideals of democracy and placed national interest above any other. This demonstrates the outgoing institutionalization of democracy in our country since the early events of June 12, 1993, that saw the advent of the Fourth Republic in 1999. Uh, before I move on, I think it would be most uncharitable if I do not commend the other parties, particularly the main opposition party, PDP, for their transparency in the world. I have seen that the former deputy speaker was already tweeting on, his, on the edge of his seat. You see, I, I, I did not, if you listen to me very carefully, I choose my words very carefully. I did not say uh, the other parties were not transparent. I said APC had the most transparent. So the key word, operating word was most. It does not mean that you did not have yours. 29 years ago, Nigeria stood on the precipice and our future as a country was in doubt. Following the annulment of an election that was adjudged as one of the freest and fairest in our history. However, out of the chaos, crisis, and doubts of that period, a democratic dispensation was launched. Over the past two decades, our democracy and democratic institutions have developed more rapidly than expected, and we have continued to defy every all to sustain our democracy. This has largely been the result of our ability to learn from our mistakes, strengthen our legal frameworks to address identified challenges, and move importantly, the collective resolve of our people to make democracy work. As we reflect on the events around June 12, I wish to call to our attention some of the most important lessons of that dark moment in our history. First, Nigerians have come to accept democracy as the best, even if an imperfect, form of government. The ability of citizens to choose and change their leaders through regular free and fair elections is an important precondition for the su success of democracy. Just recently, the Ninth National Assembly passed the Electoral Act 2022, intended as strengthening our democratic practices through the introduction of measures that improve transparency confidence in electoral institutions. The innovations in the legislation have so far impacted positively on our democratic processes. The involvement of INEC as observers of political party primaries has strengthened internal democracy and compelled political parties to be more transparent and accountable to their members. Whereas it has not solved every problem associated with the conduct of primaries, it has shown the relevance of frequent electoral reforms. I have no doubt that other innovations in the new act, especially the use of technology, will further strengthen our electoral system and inspire greater voter confidence. Perhaps the most glaring imperfection was seen during the primaries, and as always, the legislature or the legislative arm of government bore the brunt of that imperfection. The arm, which is considered universally to be the bastion of democracy, suffered greatly during the primaries. That is evidence of the imperfection, even as of now, of our system. 
Many of you will recall that the National Assembly, particularly the House of Representatives, under my leadership, fought hard for direct primaries to be the mode of primaries in our country. The reasons were not far-fetched. The reasons were obvious, at least to many of us. Apart from the definition of democracy itself, which is the government of the people, for the people, and by the people, which for us in the House of Representatives starts with the primary process, but which for many others talks about or speaks only to the general elections. Because leaders are produced from the primary process, not from the general elections. At the general elections, you're faced with a fait accompli of who you may or may not want to vote for. Your choices are limited. But we felt that at the primary level, it was important that all political party members should have a say as to who represents them, both at the party level and in government. We felt the system as its practice. Now, let me make it clear. There's nothing wrong with indirect primaries. Absolutely nothing wrong. There's some countries that, 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 that practice that. But you see, all politics is local. It is actually how those delegates are produced that is the problem. And for as long as we are in a situation where a group of men, and perhaps maybe sometimes women, sit in the, on a kitchen table and determine who, a who is a delegate and who is not a delegate, then we don't have a democracy. At the end of it all, the National Assembly or the, the House, let me be specific, and I know the same thing happened in the Senate, uh, a great majority of members lost their seats at the primary level. It's the institution that suffers. It is democracy that suffers. It is the country that suffers. There's nothing wrong with a member losing his seat based on performance. Nothing wrong at all. If you have not performed as a legislator, whether at home or in the, in the chambers, then you deserve to lose your seat. But if you lose your seat just because, just because one man or two men do not like your face, or feel that you know, so you've done your four years and somebody else will take over, uh, then we have a long way to go. At the end of it all, the institutional memory is lost. We start all over again in terms of training. And this cycle just keeps going. It's like musical chairs. And at the end of the day, we, the country suffers for it. And yet, the people who we represent, the people out there, the commentators, the talking heads, all talk about uh, compare you with advanced democracies. You compare Nigerian legislators and the Nigerian democracy with the, uh, with the US legislator, but you don't want to do what they do. How do you compare me with an American legislator, but you don't want me to? the process to be the same way. You want me to come in for four years and make an impact. There's a reason why the Constitution and the framers and the drafters of our Constitution and their infinite wisdom determined that the executive will have a two-term limit and the legislative arm, tenure will be unlimited if subject to the accept his acceptance or her acceptance by the people that he or she represents. And that's why the U.S. and advanced democracies are what they are today. You find legislators who have been there for unbelievable number of years, not because of anything, but because they're performing and the people who they represent want them. Today, unfortunately, as we move into uh, the elections, 
we already know that half, if not more than half, of the National Assembly is not coming back. So we need to continue to work on that process. Now, when we ask for direct primaries, I find it interesting that the whole world, the whole of Nigeria, and even those who fought against direct primaries are now complaining about the system. They're now complaining about the delegate system. They're now complaining about the money that, that, that was, that was, that was uh, in circulation during primaries. And I find it very ironic that when we were screaming at the top of our heads, and let the people decide, let the people decide, many a commentator would say, no, we must have a direct primaries. Uh, we must have an option. I knew at that time when many of the people, governors, and the rest of them were saying we must have an option, I knew they weren't talking about an option. I said to somebody, let's find out. Every single state is going to adopt the indirect primaries. And that's exactly what happened because they knew exactly what they wanted. But hopefully, we'll go beyond that as a country. We will advance our democracy, and our democracy will, 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 will truly reflect the wishes of the people. And second, and equally important is, and despite the importance of a sound legal framework, it's the people that actually make democracy work. The, old, the law only provides the foundation of integrity and ensures that elections are not only fair, but also honest, orderly, peaceful, and that outcomes reflect the will of the people. However, the law is implemented, however the law is implemented by the people, and it is the people that makes democracy succeed or fail. The actual heroes of June 12 were the people that defied the might of the military to demand the restoration of the mandate of M.K. Roa They include members of the civil society, traditional and religious leaders, organized labor, the media, and men and women from every section of the society, many of whom paid the ultimate price. Like all institutions for democracy to be successful, it was protected by the people at all times. Hence the now famous dictum, Eternal vigilance is the prize of liberty. In fact, at the root of Plato's critique of democracy is its tendency to degenerate into tyranny in the absence of discipline and watchfulness. We must not take our democracy for granted, as shown by the developments in many of our neighboring countries in the ECOWAS sub-region. In the years since 1999, the National Assembly has asserted its independence and has continued to play a key role not only in crafting laws that strengthen our democratic institutions, but also in exercising oversight of the executive and representing the interests of the people that, and ensuring that the collective wishes and aspirations of all Nigerians are factored into law and decision making. This is an essential component of the vigilance necessary to ensure the continued survival of democracy. The civil society and media are useful allies of the legislature, acting as watchdogs to expose excesses of government, institutions, and actors, and promote good governance. The National Assembly has passed key legislations to promote freedom of information and greater accountability in government operations. Another important lesson of the June 12 struggle is the widespread support for the revalidation of that mandate across the six geopolitical zones of the country. The clamor for democracy transcended some of the primordial sentiments that have beleaguered Nigeria since independence. Nigerians of all faiths voted for a Muslim Muslim ticket and forced to defend their choice. At a time when our country has become deeply polarized along ethnic and religious lines, June 12 reminds us that. We cannot afford to fail, giving them a lot of rest on the outcomes of the next election. More than ever before, we are faced with multiple challenges of unprecedented proportions that threaten to destabilize Nigeria and push us into chaos. I must challenge us as a people to rise to the occasion and engage in a frank discussion on political solutions to the problems we face. We must address the root causes rather than the symptoms and develop a system that promotes freedom, human rights, inclusion, economic competition, and public consensus. We must understand that democracy is not a spectator sport, and that the majesty of democracy only fully, is only fully appreciated if we participate. 
uh, which were approved by your match by observing that the National Assembly has and continues to be on the side of the people and to respond positively to the lessons of John Troll as outlined above. The ongoing constitutional alteration process has shown our resolve to strengthen democratic institutions and make governance all inclusive. Several of the bills already transmitted to state assemblies include those on the financial autonomy of the state legislature and state judiciary, devolution of powers, affirmative action for women, recognition for traditional institutions and local government autonomy. Ladies and gentlemen, the march to democracy is a marathon, not a sprint, and the road is often bumpy and rough. In democracies, change can only be incremental and government must move forward in a sustained manner with political, economic, and social reforms. This is the only way we can guarantee that the sacrifices of June 12 were not in vain. So even though we gather here today to commemorate June 12, in truth, those that endure the struggle, the struggle have commemorated and consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. We can however resolve the ideals that they fought, that they fought for, equality and freedom, and become the better of our democracy. Thank you, and God bless Federal Republic.